Surprise! It's another Bloodborne video. I haven't done one of these in an extremely long time. Uh, specifically because I stopped playing the game. And I sold it. Uh, I rebought it a few days ago. Uh, with the DLC included. And I'm glad I did. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, the only problems I've been having is what I forgot was the reason why I quit. And the reason for that was um, because if you get blood vials starved, you're fucked. Like, the fact that there's not a, and I might have talked about this in a previous Bloodborne video, but I wouldn't, I, I don't know because uh, it's been such a long time since I recorded a Bloodborne video. Uh, and I probably didn't talk about it considering I didn't have that problem until, you know, I didn't realize I had that problem until I started to completely stop playing. So I probably wasn't recording videos anymore by that time. Uh, but yeah, if you run out of blood vials and you can't find any more and you don't have the money to buy new ones, you're stuck. Uh, you gotta pretty much go back to Central uh, Yarnum which is one of the only places so far that I know of that has a lot of blood vials. Like, uh, places other than that that I've been traveling to just don't have any. You'll find one or two maybe every 20 minutes. Uh, unless you're, you go after the big fat dudes, which will drop two or three. Uh, but if I've got no blood vials, I'm not going to go after them. Uh, so it's just sort of interesting how that works. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, Vicar Amelia, I think. She is a very interesting character. has a very interesting character design. I just call her the reindeer. Uh, but she's very pretty. Uh, just the, you know, the white long fur and the reindeer antlers and, you know, she's got a big cute black nose and whatever. Obviously, she, her facial features send chills down my spine though you know that long snout and the just the snarling looking uh you know teeth just sends chills down my spine but it's it's sort of a an awe inspiring beast for sure and here we have an interesting cut scene which i've seen before just uh kind of adds a little bit more of the lore to the game Shows you a little bit more of uh, what the blood is about. Obviously, it's going to be very cryptic, and it's not going to straight up tell you story because that's what Miyazaki does, what From Software does. They want you to figure it out on your own. Now, as far as the Bloodborne story goes, I'm not that interested in it. It's not that intriguing to me, which is probably another reason why I quit. I just didn't really care about the story too much. Uh... I mean, it's not very original. It's, you know, uh, beasts and and werewolf type things that, well, they don't turn back. So, you know, they don't turn back human. Um, there have been stories before of hunters that go out and, you know, they very gothic themed hunt the beasts and the vampires and, you know, all, all that stuff. So we've seen that before. Um, also, the... Humans going mad is very much like Hollows and Dark Souls. Uh, so there's just a lot of borrowed elements um, from obviously the gameplay as well as the story. But it definitely is an interesting world. I love the gothic theme. Uh, this is probably my, my, an era of history I'm most intrigued by. Um, you know, just a renaissance. And, and stuff like that. It's the most intriguing to me. But let's talk about the Witch of Hemwick. She's an absolute bitch. Fuck this boss. You have to kill her twice. And even before that, you gotta worry about the fact that she's invincible or invisible un unless you find her. And then once you find her, she goes invincible after a certain amount of hits. And sometimes you can't even, when you hit her, it doesn't even deal damage her at all, which I don't understand. The What I think happens, and obviously everyone else who's gone through this game is already going to know the reason for that, um, but I don't. 
So what I think happens is if there are enough of them sickle wielding shadow peoples on the map at, at at once, then she won't deal damage. Uh, I either that or, or it's just like a clone of her or some shit. So yeah, the first time I beat her, or just at least beat this part, I was like, oh fucking thank god that shit was so dumb. And then I saw the second health bar and that's when I died. Um, because for some reason, uh, this specter that joined me, or the other hunter that joined me, uh, left. And I, I don't know why that happened. Uh, it, well, this guy just, Fruity Pebbles just died. But the other time, the guy left and, and he didn't die and it didn't say that he returned home or anything. Uh, so that was interesting. Um, but there's only been a few bosses I've been able to beat on my own so far. Uh, with Dark Souls 3, same thing happened in the beginning. It took me a while to be able to, to beat everyone on my own. So far, the only bosses I haven't beat on my own in Dark Souls 3 is the Nameless King and Pawn of Solvent. And I feel like I'm going to beat the Nameless King before I beat Pawn of Solvent. Because that guy's fucking reckless. Um, but anyway, uh, where I'm at in Bloodborne right now, I'm, I'm, I'm blood vial starved again. And I'm taking a little bit of a break. Because uh, I don't want to get too frustrated. Something else that frustrates me is just there's so many winding um, areas to travel through. Which is cool for the most part because uh, it makes the world feel bigger. It's not as streamlined and as Dark Souls 3 is. Uh, and it doesn't feel as developed and video gamey because of that. It's really a beautiful world. Um, but I'm definitely struggling right now. Hopefully I'll have a, another boss fight up in time for you guys within a week or two. Um, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.